Welcome to Comics Bazaar, the channel of comics commentary and arcana. This video features Marvel Comics Presents number 84, and this is the finale of Barry Windsor Smith's Weapon X. And it gets a wraparound cover, this beautiful wraparound cover, pen, ink, and brush by Windsor Smith. You can see his signature there um, on Logan's hair. Really great close up on Logan with his bald fist there, his uh, hand slightly open, and the adamantium claws now extruding from between the bones of the back of his hand. And that close up on his face, you can see the eyelashes delineated there as well with um, probably some white paint and his eyes are closed. And is he dreaming is the question. And that is something that's going to be explored in the triple size story inside. So for the finale, we have 24 instead of eight pages to finish off this memorable and um, like really masterfully drawn series by Barry Windsor Smith. So let's look at the credits page here on the inside cover. So Weapon X, chapter 12, but it's part 13. Uh, Logan has destroyed most of Project X, including the professor. Ellipsis, or has he? So story and art by Barry Windsor Smith, letterer Jim Novak and BWS. What that means is that Windsor Smith is indicating sound effects, is indicating the placement of speech balloons and narrative captions, and Jim Novak is doing the actual lettering over the penciled art. So great opening page here where we've got this. Uh, we've got three equally sized horizontal panels. We pick up from the end of the previous chapter. Logan has regained his senses somewhat, and he's carrying the corpse of the professor to the broken shards of the window um, of the control booth here. And so the camera's moving in and Logan's getting closer to us as well. And then he um, throws the corpse of the professor through the booth window. And just, I, great, I love the little details here. We've got the blood on his claws. He's, uh, he's stabbed the professor um, through the uh, chest and into the head in the previous uh, um, installment of the storyline. And as he's bringing the professor up, his glasses are knocked off his head here and more shards of glass broken free as well. So let's turn the page. Get a wonderful nine panel grid page of the professor's corpse falling from the control booth into this fiery pit below, which he had designed to be uh, the death of Wolverine. But um, Logan has turned the tables on the professor. Now what's really great in on this particular page is the way that Windsor Smith is able to render a corpse, a cadaver with no tension in the body, falling and twisting through the air and following the spectacles falling down with him as well into this particular fiery pith, pit below. And then the transition, we keep the same um, layout motif of the uh, the three panels, but instead of a nine panel grid on this particular page, we move into Logan waking up. So he's woken up, he must have passed out after that effort. Um, he's fully healed at this point from the injuries sustained in the previous couple of chapters. And he's wondering um, what where he is and what is happening. And what is playing in the background are snatches of conversations between the professor, Dr. Cornelius, and Ms. Hines, their secretary admin person, computer person, from all the previous installments of the issue. So this is very nicely chosen by Windsor Smith to wrap up and recall elements of the whole of Experiment X and that monstrous dehumanization of Logan. So as he's coming through, um, he coming to rather, um, he hears these snatches of dialogue. Use your imagination. Think of the hor horror of it all that the professor said to Hines in the previous installment. Can't think. This is Logan's thought. Must have been some party. And this goes all the way back to the prologue where Logan got drunk and he was um, abducted for Experiment X. So this is him coming around to himself for the first time after, what is it, weeks, months, however long he's been the subject of Experiment X. Yeah, I'd like to see the other guy. I can hear you, he says to these fragmentary recordings. Please respond, Logan is still alive, but security took care of Logan, Professor. Um, you bet, he says. 
good, good stuff. Let's continue. And yeah, so he's still pulling himself together. He finds himself at the center of a very grisly scene with the severed hand there of the professor on the, co on the controls of the computer system. Whoa, he thinks to himself, this ain't no joke. Okay, game's over, he whispers, his voice is hoarse. Who's pulling this stunt? Answer me. And um, he's thinking there, nobody's controlling this. I'm alone here. Um, I gotta get out. So I'm out of here. And down the uh, stairs he goes into uh, the, the room outside the, um, the, uh, the what, what is it like? It was a, kind of like a energy exhaust center. And he finds the dead body of, the, of Dr. Cornelius there, um, whom he uh, skewered on his adamantium claws as well. And he s thinks here to himself, I know this man in a memory, a dream, a dream of dying. This place stinks of it, hanging in the air like heat. But who did the killing? And there he is looking at his own bloodied hands. Got blood on me. No wounds, my blood, or did I knife this guy here? What did he do to me? And that hand back there, severed hand. So the pieces of the puzzle are facing him and he's looking still at his own hands. That's a great drawing there. Um, surely Barry Windsor Smith um, doing a study maybe of his own hands in the mirror for that. And here again and here as Wolverine or Logan rather I should say sees these housings on the back of his hands and then the claws extruding as we hear dialogue here from um, Heinz from the previous installment. I can't stand pain, physical pain. Please, I beg you, kill me qu quickly. Run, Mr. Logan, run. So, am I dead? He uh, asks himself, dead, am I? Walking dead, man. And then he's flashing back to the professor, telling him, you are an animal. And then him insisting that he's Logan, that he has an identity, that he's a man, but he's haunted by the echo of what the professor said that he's an animal so he turns with the claws and um, decides to himself that he got to get away as that accusation or that taunt of his being an animal um, follows him in the panel really good stuff great command of anatomy um, on these pages as per usual and then we're into um, a psychedelic type scene where he's running on these floor panels, but suddenly they start, um, these kind of like thorns start to grow out of the floor. And he's be, he, figure, he um, senses that he's being pursued. Something's behind him, moving with him, with him like a living shadow. Um, and he, he thinks to himself, and if I, if I slow down, it'll get me. I'll suffocate in it, in its darkness. So this is true nightmarish stuff for Logan. And I won't be able to scream, he says, or yell or fight it off because it'll be inside me, under my skin, in my guts, inside my bones. This is a great page here. Really interesting idea where Logan's physicality starts to fade out as the spikes or spines or thorns start emerging from his own body. And he's thinking, I must run, run forever, fight forever, never give in the beast out of the pitch black, it's coming. It's free and it wants revenge. It's gonna rip me, turn me inside out. I'm running, running into unending darkness and it's behind me, it's everywhere, everywhere I am, but don't give up. So a real psychodrama on these particular pages. Um, and what's happening? Is Logan hallucinating? What is going on? Well, let's keep going. It gets even more horrific. This is an excellent page here. Four horizontal panels. Logan is beginning to transform into this spiky beast. Um, gristle shot, knees giving in, every thrust blood and fire, bones heavy, dense like lead, and he screams. Shot through like steel in the heart. Great dialogue here in Barry Windsor, Windsor Smith's script, caving in under the weight, the weight, and the panels narrow as well to give an indication of the pressure and tension he's under under the weight, the weight of the beast. And now we switch into a different level of reality, switching. And that's Heinz's characteristic pink um, dialogue caption. And then the professor's characteristic green. So what's happened? They, they appeared to die um, in the previous installment. 
So how are they alive again? And who or what is this beast that is snapping its chains, chains rather, or perhaps the chains are the chain link of the security fence here that Logan has cut his way out of. You think so? Um, asked the professor. Then we shall see what we shall see. Let's turn the page. And what do we see? We get a huge, or like a big page image of Logan naked out in the snowy woods facing, of all things, a snow leopard. Um, there it is. Or our Siberian tiger, rather. Heinz corrects the professor there. Yes, thank you, madam, he says. We could have set this up better. It's Cornelius. He's there too. How do you mean, doctor? If Logan had to seek it out, you know, hunt the thing down just based on instinct to kill it or confront it or whatever, instead of the tiger just being there, it would have been more telling, I think. And the professor responds, yeah, I suppose you're right, but still, it is an acceptable scenario for one such as Logan's simplistic perception. So the professor here is still... Um, condescending regarding Wolverine, regarding Logan. And now we get this action sequence of Logan facing naked, just with his adamantium claws, the starving Siberian tiger. And um, the commentary then of the professor and Cornelius regarding this fight between man and beast. Um, and um, Cornelius asks for Heinz to turn camera four on the action. He's getting the advantage, Professor, says Cornelius. But not so long ago, says the Professor in reply, Weapon X beheaded a grizzly bear. So that was some chapters back. Without hesitation, without so much as a tussle. This is what I call getting the advantage. Cornelius responds, you've got to have some faith, Professor. Look, I'll lay you a hundred on Logan. What do you think of that? Give me full on six, Hines. Come on, wake up. And she's switching the cameras. Um, uh, probably the screens they're watching this on but really great artwork here um, by Barry Windsor Smith really fantastic rendering of the vegetation and um, the snow covered trees and the tracks of the Siberian tiger here in the snow as well the shadows the spotting of blacks the command of anatomy there really excellent stuff from Windsor Smith so let's continue with this another great page Three horizontal panels, Logan increasingly breaking um, the port, the panel borders as well here and then even more so here as he stabs the Siberian tiger through the mouth at the back of the head and then into its heart. And so that's what Cornelius observes, another one straight to the heart, son of a gun's more brutal than ever. So what is going on, the reader is wondering at this point. And Logan stands victorious above the killed Siberian tiger. And now we see the Professor, Heinz and Cornelius all alive and watching Logan on screen. So what on earth is going on? And um, Cornelius says here, you underestimated your prize, Professor. Logan was set up. We gave him a chance to escape, but he didn't run. Instead, he turned around and brutalized a lot of us. And that seems to be in reference to what the, the previous chapters that we have read up to this point. Then we jammed his psyche with his fear of mutantism. Didn't faze him. I'd say he came through A1, wouldn't you? And the professor says here, yes, yes. And yet he failed to kill Heinz. An act of mercy that still leaves doubt in my mind. And Cornelius responds, that's just because Heinz was never a threat to Logan, professor. It's just, it's like we just proved He'll only kill if threatened with death or, and Heinz adds, or out of hunger. So this would seem to be all still the experiment going on and a psychic dimension of the experiment and that everything that we were reading heretofore in the previous chapters, not everything, but the previous couple of chapters, was um, a psychodrama programmed by the Experiment X team. So we get another good look at them in their um, control booth with all the computer screens around. And um, the professor here says, I suppose we should consider this experiment a success, flawed though it may be. And Hines says, I'm, if I may say, doctor, I think Mr. Logan only killed you because of that accidental shooting, sir. Um, she says that to Cornelius. 
I don't think he would have attacked you otherwise. So Cornelius is impressed with that. The professor not so impressed. And here we go. Logan is to be picked up by the Wranglers once again. And um, they're fairly blasé that that's, everything is going to go according to plan. And Cornelius says to the professor here, you know, making up that stuff about how you were actually working for some, somebody else, some great power or something. The professor quietly responds, yes, quite. Just you, like you were just a stooge or a flunky instead of the genius behind the experiment X. Yes, that was a, and this is interesting because it seems then that um, everything we saw about the professor contacting someone above him that had been clandestinely invested in the experiment was used in the psychodrama. And the professor's responses here cue the reader to wonder whether that was a ploy of the professors to make them think exactly as Cornelius, is do Cornelius does instead of the truth that there really was um, an overall um, power behind Experiment X that the, that the professor has been reporting to. So here we see the scene with the Wranglers coming up to Logan and he extrudes his claws. That's a great panel there. And, um, you know, we know that there's going to be trouble for those Wranglers and there they are exactly dead. And so Heinz is calling through. Um, or, or, yeah, well, she is changing the camera angle there, asking for security. Where's Mr. Logan? The Wranglers got him. Wranglers, where's Mr. Logan? So she won't get a response to that particular call. And this is really interesting now. So the alarm sounds. The Wranglers don't respond. There's an emergency. The professor calls for security. And he gets a garbled response here. I love the way that Barry Windsor Smith is showing the reflection of the computer screens on the, on the faces of Heinz. Cornelius and the professor here, that's really well done. And then we see the three claws cutting through the door of their control room and Cornelius dropping all his files there in alarm. And there's the claws making a hole and Logan's coming through that doorway. Again, just like a horror movie, um, like The Shining. And they're all taken by shock and surprise and their security team is calling them back. Heinz, you there, Dr. Cornelius, anybody? The end. So it would seem like there is an ironic uh, climax conclusion to the Weapon X storyline where it was all a dream that they were uh, murdered, what, that they were killed by Logan once he um, came out of his uh, programming. But here it is happening again, yes? Or what is going on because turn the page and there is an interlude and escape and this is really intriguing this is a very interesting opening here the colors here Barry Windsor Smith of course responsible for the colors we see the professor's broken spectacles once again and Heinz asking doctor and Cornelius responding yeah Heinz what's up and she says, I was wondering, can I talk to you? Sure, it's just that I keep thinking about Mr. Logan. Yep, don't we all, replies Cornelius. And what we're doing, yeah. And that, well, before I came here, was Mr. Logan here? No, I don't know, what do you mean? And all the while here, we see Logan out in the snows and woods of northern Canada, Alberta, sliding down a snowdrift here. Just really great stuff. It really looks cold there. In that particular scene that Windsor Smith has conjured up and more great panels two large vertical panels on both of these two pages and their dialogue the dialogue between Heinz and Cornelius continues we're doing something bad aren't we sir she asked Cornelius Mr Logan was forced into this and Cornelius responds I don't know I don't know about forced Heinz see if you listen to the professor it's like this is all kind of preordained it's like Logan's destiny or something. And she asks, how could the professor know Mr. Logan's destiny, sir? And he responds, I don't know, to be honest. And she says, all I see is him suffering. The professor seems to enjoy causing him pain. It's like torture, sir. And then Cornelius has 
a very um, a very hard nosed response. Yeah, well, some guys they got the worst destinies, you know. And then Heinz is crying. And he says, "Look, this poor slob doesn't have much of a life anyway." And that is what we saw in the prologue. Um, and he continues and says, "He's a mutant." The professor says he ain't even human, but Heinz insists he is human, sir. You can't tell me, you can't tell me that you don't see it in his eyes. You can see he's a man who's been turned into a monster. Just great drawings again here. Love the detail of Logan's hair um, um, with the snow in it and the icicles forming around his hair. It's freezing out there. And then we get this upshot of him and his arm coming towards us. The foreshortening there is amazing. And he looks as, as if he's plodding wearily through the snow with his eyes closed there as well. Um, just like um, an automaton. I don't know what to, uh, what to tell you, Heinz, says Cornelius. I'm going on what the professor said. Maybe anything other than that is out of my league. And she responds, and I think the reader agrees with this. I think the professor is a liar, sir. Maybe, he says. I wish I'd never become involved with Experiment X, sir. And he says, yeah, me too, I guess. Come on. Cheer up, Heinzy, be over soon. And what does this mean? The spectacles here, the professor's bloody hand again. Did Logan really kill them? Um, is this dialogue from, is this dialogue happening as Logan escapes out into the North, the great white North of Canada, where he is to be found and discovered by James Hudson and um, his wife Heather um, and is that what we're seeing here or is this all still part of the mind games as in that Logan coming back and um, apparently going to kill them here was uh, just yet another program before he was let loose yeah it's intriguing it's an ambiguous ending mysterious and it's something that Larry Hama would pick up on and develop in the course of his Wolverine series with Mark Silvestri. So a really, really great work, a great decision to give us a big finale, 24 page finale here. Um, the last installment of Weapon X. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section to the video. One last thing I'll note is you have to, you, if you can imagine the original art for this uh, wraparound cover, these pages are going to be 11 by 17, 11 by 17 inches. So Logan's face and hands are going to be life size with foreshortening taken into account as well, especially for that right fist there, which is more closer to us. Life size uh, drawing. And this reminded me um, of a couple of months ago, I went to Milan and I went to the Biblioteca Ambrosiana in Milan. And in there, there's fantastic Renaissance artwork, including um, uh, stuff by Leonardo da Vinci. But the really, the highlight of it for me was the preserved cartoon, a life-size, a more than life-size drawing of, uh, pre in preparation for his fresco of the papal apartments in Vatican City, of the School of Athens. That's the one with Plato and Aristotle in the center and all the ancient Greek philosophers and um, geographers and geometers and architects and so on and so forth in the composition. But you're able to go right up to the, uh, the cartoon, which comes from the Italian cartone. It's like paper and you can see the graphite and charcoal drawing by Raphael. And it's exactly like this, like the hatching, the cross hatching, um, it is very, very like what Windsor Smith is doing here. Like Barry Windsor Smith is a talent who, if he had been born 400, 500 years in the past, would, have, would himself have been an Italian Renaissance master. Well, there you go. Um, if you enjoyed my review and commentary, please like the video on YouTube. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more content like this.